Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Laptop Expansion Options. Today we're going to be talking about expansion cards, then we'll move on to random access memory, and we'll conclude with flash memory. Now, there's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. And we'll begin by talking about expansion cards for the laptop. The laptop's small form factor, and sometimes its method of manufacturing, can make it functionally more difficult to expand. If increasing the functionality of a laptop is the goal, in some cases a technician doesn't have the option of just opening the case and inserting new hardware. However, in many cases, the increased capabilities can be achieved through other means. That's where expansion cards can come into play. The first expansion cards developed for laptops were the PCM-CIA card. They were introduced by the Personal Computer Memory Card Industry Association in 1990. They were also known as the PC card and later as the card bus. Originally, it was developed as a means of expanding the storage capabilities of very small form factor devices, and then it was extended to work with laptops. After its initial development, additional capabilities were added to the standards. Now, the PCM-CIA card either uses a 16-bit or 32-bit data path, and it came in three types. The first card developed was the Type 1 card. It's 3.3 millimeters thick and it only came with the 16-bit data path. It was commonly used as additional random access memory or as flash memory or as static random access memory. Then along came the Type 2 card. It was 5 millimeters thick and it could come with either a 16 or 32-bit data path. It introduced input-output support to the card. Commonly, they were used as modems or network interface cards. The final type of PCM-CIA card was the Type 3 card. It was 10.5 millimeters thick and it always came with a 32-bit data path. This is the card bus card. It is more robust and allows for a full-sized interface as opposed to the compact input-output interfaces that came with the Type 2 card. External hard drives were also developed as Type 3 card bus cards. As the PC card or card bus card aged, we discovered that it didn't work as well as we'd hoped. So the PCMCIA developed the Express card and introduced it in 2003 as the replacement for the card bus. It has all the features and functionality of the earlier cards, but also offers additional performance. And what do I mean by that? Well, it can take advantage of internal connections to either the PCIe or USB bus. This allows for possible transfer rates of 280 megabits per second in USB 2 mode and up to 3.2 gigabits per second in either USB 3 mode or in PCIe 2 mode. Now the PCMCIA disbanded in 2009. That means that this standard is no longer being developed. However, the standard is being maintained by the USB Implementers Forum, the USB-IF. Now Express Cards came in two formats, the Express Card 34 and the Express Card 54. The Express Card 34 is 34 millimeters wide and 75 millimeters long with a 26 pin connector. The Express Card 54 is 54 millimeters wide and 75 millimeters long and it also had a 26 pin connector and it's easily recognizable because it's L shaped. Now the Express Card 54 slot could accept either of the Express Card formats. So if your laptop came with an Express Card 54 slot, you could use either card in that laptop. Now let's move on to random access memory. Laptops use the small outline dual inline memory module, the SODIMM. It was developed as the random access memory solution for the smaller form factor. In many cases, it is an 
easily performed expansion option used to increase the performance of a laptop. SODIMs came in many different versions. There was the 100-pin SD RAM, the 144-pin SD RAM, the 200-pin DDR, the 200-pin DDR2, the 204-pin DDR3, and the 260-pin DDR4. Increasing the amount of SODIM in a laptop can increase performance, just as increasing the amount of RAM in a PC does. In modern laptops, it's not uncommon for their SODIM to be soldered in place. In these cases, you cannot easily upgrade the RAM. Now let's talk about flash memory. So what is flash memory? Well, it's a type of non-volatile computer memory that was developed by Toshiba. Non-volatile means that it doesn't require an electrical charge to maintain the state of the data. It's commonly used as a highly portable method of storing data and applications. Its most common form factor is the USB flash drive. It is reasonably inexpensive and it can operate at high speeds. Now some operating systems can use flash memory as random access memory. Specifically, Microsoft developed ReadyBoost as a means of caching data on flash, effectively extending the random access memory to the flash memory module. That often leads to an increase in the performance of a laptop. Due to the nature of its construction and operation, flash memory performance does degrade over time and it will eventually wear out. But don't worry, in most cases, you lose it before you wear it out. Now that concludes this session on laptop expansion options. We started with expansion card options for the laptop, then we moved on to random access memory, and we concluded with flash memory. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm looking forward to doing another one.